Have you ever seen a movie that is so cringe that you don't know whether you should curl up into a ball and cry? or pass the film on to somebody else so they could endure this cursed film that's left you questioning what the heck have you just witnessed? I freaking have. I don't know if this movie was meant to be taken seriously or if it's simply taking the piss out of you for paying for it. Is this a comedy or is it a drama? Let's try and figure this anomaly out. Let's take a gamble. Let's run into the big white stranger's van and see what happens. Let's discuss Tommy Wiseau's the room. The room is hailed as the Citizen Kane of bad movies. Here at the Movie Massacre Show, we feel that we have a keen eye for movies that make you want to shit your eyes out. Is the room really the Citizen Kane of bad movies? Let's take a look. In fact, let's see what my friend the Lone Wolf Cub thinks about the room. The room is absolute garbage. Straight to the point. Anyways, we begin with random shots of San Francisco while the credits roll. This tells us nothing about what's to come. So, skip the credits and get straight into the action. This is where Johnny walks in and gives the love of his life a gift. Hi, babe. I have something for you. Ooh, I bet you do, you dirty what old is bastard. It? Just a little something. Is it something thick and long that vibrates? Open it already. I honestly can't contain my excitement. What's with that fucking laugh? Oh, he's a daddy smooth, oh, isn't he? Thank you. What a lovely bastard, eh? What a lovely bastard. This is so he can get some of the old in out in out. Here's some of Tommy Wiseau's legendary acting skills at work. Wow, you look so sexy, Lisa. Oh, you fucking pulled, mate. You've pulled. You've pulled. Oh, a lovely little twirl as well. Isn't it fabulous? Oh, it does, oh, it Lisa. Do it looks beautiful. After trying the dress on, Lisa comes downstairs. Johnny's friend enters the room. He's called Denny. This young man is like an adopted son to Johnny. So, Johnny being the caring man that he is, pays for the kids' rent and college fees. Fucking idiot. Johnny and Lisa then tell Denny that they're going upstairs to go heels to Jesus. To start things off, they start hitting each other with pillows, which I find rather kinky. This is where things go from wholesome fun to the darkest depths of weirdness. Johnny's adopted son jumps into bed and tries to join in. Saucy bastard. They have a good laugh and tell him to leave. Little Weinstein in the making then asks if he can watch. This act seems perfectly normal to Lisa and Johnny. They just laugh it off and politely tell him to leave. This is a whole world of red flags. No, 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 no. Why would you be cool with that? Johnny Wise, I was cool with it. Fucking weirdo. Speaking of fucking weirdos, don't forget to stick around because halfway through this episode, we'll be talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre 22 and we'll be reading some comments out from the lovely fucking horror community. Fucking idiots. I'm getting the feeling here that Johnny is an extension of Tommy Wiseau's real personnel. Hmm, there's more weird stuff on him, but I'll tell you about that later. After this weirdness, they just polite laugh it off and tell him to leave. This is when the passion begins. They have to establish to us, the viewer, that Johnny and Lisa are in love. What we get is the cringiest, creepiest love scene that's ever made it to camera. It's porn for cowards. The scene goes on forever, and when you think it's about to stop, it just carries on. And what's even worse, what's, what put, really puts it on the legendary status of cringe is, we've got a full cheesy pop song over it, while Tommy Wiseau just does his mating call. It's so cringe, this goes on forever, for the full time of the song. I swear they've done this just so Tommy Wiseau can show the ladies what it's like to get in bed with him. And so that they can see this lady in bed making sexual sounds, and we can also see her boobs. It's very creepy indeed. I swear this is what went on at the board meeting. Hey, the actress we've employed is hot. Ask if she'll do a filthy scene so we can see her boobs. And see what she looks like while getting banged. So we can see what she looks like in the bedroom. Good news boys, she said yes. Now we know. Now we know. Pretty fucking dark and corrupt, isn't it? There's no need for this to be in the movie at all. There's four or five of these scenes, and one of them is simply reused footage. 
each love scene goes on for a full length of a song. It's simply added to the film so the people involved can see what it's like to see her Chi Chi's, and it's also a time filler so they can call this a film. Fun fact, the actor that played Lisa obviously felt incredibly uncomfortable filming this hot and sweaty scene, and I don't blame her either. Apparently, they did the love scene for six minutes and she was incredibly uncomfortable. If I was there, I would have just quit. I would have just walked off on set because it was very, very obvious that they just wanted to see what it looked like watching her getting banged. Come in, come in. Why do you smell like the back end of a goat? I smell like the back end of ten goats. Anyway, what do you want? You can't say cunt. It's a horrible word. Why can't I say cunt? Cunt is a word that's frowned upon. But she is a cunt. She's come to Tina Fuckleton to be exact. Plus this video is set to not for kids. Now get out and keep away from those poor goats. Cunt. We then meet Lisa's pathetic excuse of a mom. Lisa tells Satan that she doesn't love Mark. even though we've just witnessed her and Mark indulge in softcore porn. Yes, I am fully aware that I called Johnny Mark. This is due to the fact that I lost interest in this movie within the first two minutes. The mum then tells Lisa that she should stay with him simply because he has a good job and wants to buy her a house. Bitch. We then find out that Lisa and Johnny's best friend have something beautiful planned for him. Before I show you the next scene of Mark and Lisa getting naughty, I need to show you this. It's fucking incredible. <laughs> I mean, That's not him acting. That's him laughing. The sexy dress. I mean, what's going on here? Oh, I'm dead. I need you to make love to me. Not a problem, love. I'll be over in five. Cue long unnecessary sex scene. <laughs> this poor fucking lad <laughs> he actually walked out at cinemas when this scene came on he's <laughs> killing me so far for me in order for the room to achieve the citizen cane of bad movies i would simply have to switch it off and then I'd have to watch it just to review it for you guys. But, to be honest, I'm having a laugh at it due to how bad it is. So it, for me, so far, it is not achieving Citizen Kane status. But as of right now, I'm just simply laughing at it due to how awful it is. But this does not mean that you should check it out. Unless you like having a good laugh at movies, of course. Well, anyway, let's talk dialogue. If you give a window lick of some crayons and a notepad, this is the kind of stuff they would write. Hi. Can I help you? Yeah, can I have a dozen red roses, please? Why oh, is there a Johnny, dog sat on the you. fucking counter? Here you go. <laughs> That's me. How Dear much is me. it? It'll be $18. Here you go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. Who the heck talks like this? And while I'm at it, what's with this stupid laugh? It's the same damn laugh throughout the film. I'll even prove it. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye bye. It's actually about four or five minutes of this, but let's just get on with it. You get the point. Johnny then comes home and tells Lisa that he didn't get a promotion at work, that he was promised. Lisa, the co- no. What are you in? Anyhow, Lisa then gets Johnny drunk. You have nice legs, Lisa. <laughs> you have nice pants. <laughs> you rascals, Lisa and Johnny. I'm you tired. rascals. I'm wasted. I love you, darling. The next day, Lisa tells everyone that Johnny got drunk and hit her due to not getting his promotion. Evil Devil Woman. Fun facts. The crew knew that the film was terrible and had to conceal their laughter throughout filming. The director of photography had a tent where he could laugh out of sight while watching the footage. This one's hilarious. Why Zoo wanted to have a scene with a flying car so he could show the audience that Johnny's a vampire. How the hell does a flying car establish that Johnny's a vampire? I thought, I thought, I honestly thought he got his look from Charles Lee Ray. 
Want to hear some more weird stuff? Well, listen to this. Johnny leaves the door of his apartment unlocked so his friends can make love on the couch. I don't even know what to say about this. It has nothing to do with the story, plus he's ultra creepy. Honestly, all I'll be doing is talking about filler scenes, so I'll tell you about the really odd ones, even though they're all odd, but you know, you know where I'm going with it. Like this one. We see that Weinstein is getting attacked by a drug dealer. Lisa, Mark and Johnny come to the rescue. Guess what, amigos? This goes nowhere. That's the end of that, I guess. Best friends Johnny and Mark have a heart to heart. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Isn't that the best acting you've ever fucking seen in your entire life? I did not. Let's play it again for giggles. I did not. <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hey, Johnny. What's up? I have a problem with Lisa. She said that I hit her. I did not. Sorry, I couldn't resist. What? Well, did you? No, it's not true. Don't even ask. What's new with you? Well, I'm just sitting up here thinking, you know? Yeah, he's banging your missus, pal. Anyway, speaking of banging people, I feel like I've just been fucked in the ass when I went on Twitter and Facebook and read a few comments from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 in the lovely horror community. I feel like I've lost some fucking brain cells reading these. But anyway, I need to share it with you because it's so fucking stupid. So let's take a nasty fall down into that rabbit hole of the horror community's comments. I mean, let's share this, let's share this. Look at how amazing this is. Come on then, Ronald, what have you got to say? Not filmed in Texas, so I won't be watching it. Oh, oh my goodness me. Not filmed in Texas, so I won't be watching... I suppose, uh, don't watch Star Wars, mate, because they didn't film that in fucking space, did they? Trying to make sense of this comment is like trying to chew bubblegum with my asshole. It's impossible. Let's have a look at what else glorious things this community has to offer. FT138, Falcon Tattoo. I was promised cannibalism and I got none, son. No, no, you wasn't promised any cannibalism in this film. Didn't even say it on the poster. Fucking idiot. Just get him some fucking crayons and a colouring book, he might feel better. <sighs> Fuck me. See what else this fucking cesspit has to offer. Josh the Horror Guy. Texas Chainsaw Massacre was better than Scream. No, you thought it was. It doesn't mean it's actually better. In fact, I'm thinking about posting that I like eggs better than bacon, so I'm just gonna fucking spew that out on Twitter. Here's a fucking belter by Dr. Samuel Loomis. Texas Chainsaw Massacre on Netflix was better than Rob Zombie's Halloween movies. Change my mind. No, I don't need to change your mind. Why are you writing... That doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even make sense. Texas Chainsaw Massacre was specifically premiered on Netflix. You like saying it as though Rob Zombie's Halloween movies were premiered on Netflix. No, no, it really wasn't. They actually came out in the cinemas because they actually had a fucking budget and a good fucking running time because Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 was on for about the length of the fucking Rugrats episode. You fucking idiot. And plus, again, it's all fucking subjective. It's what you like. Like... People on Twitter and a lot of critics tell you that that's how it is. No, no, it's subjective. It's whatever you feel. It, and that's my opinion, and that's your opinion, so just stick it up your ass. Maybe, but let's keep things in perspective. My 81-year-old neighbour can't even lift a chainsaw. We're going with that one, are we? It's just a film, it's fantasy. It's so you can fear him, because it makes him fearful that he's got an inv invincibility thing about him. <sighs> I... Oh, my brain's hurting. My brain is actually hurting. I suppose we're going to get those fucking legendary comments where people say, It's copied Halloween 2018. Well, fuck, I spoke too soon, didn't I? Well, mostly just the Halloween storyline they ripped off. Oh, you are a fucking genius, aren't you? You are a... F oh, my... Look at this guy. Everybody just look at this guy. Oh, fuck's sake, there's another one fighting the course. Come on, busty heart. Stop trying to be edgy, bro. The movie sucked. There wasn't anything to enjoy. Bad acting, insufferable, unlikable characters. Horrible plot. They took the Halloween 2018 formula and copied it just to flop. No, no thanks. Oh, we got another genius. 2018 formula. Um, ugh, Halloween copied itself when it with Halloween H2O. Idiot. And then these other movies before that that even that did that. It's just a film. It's a film. I... Oh, oh. <laughs> this one's one of my favourites. 
and stating the obvious like most of the crap on Twitter. I also might enjoy it if they just made a good movie. Well, if they made a good movie, you, you obviously would enjoy it, idiot. And for fuck's sake, here's another twat trying to fight the cause for the horror community. Let's wave the flag for the community because we're all one. No, you're not. You're all fucking arguing amongst yourselves like idiots. Anyway, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 22 slaps. Fuck is y'all talking about? I don't even know what this means. Anyways, before I get brain damaged, let's get on with the video. We're constantly reminded that these two are best friends. I'm so happy I have you as my best friend. Oh, it's friend, lovely, and I isn't love Lisa it? So much. John is my best friend. Guess what, everybody? We then get another stupid filler scene of these friends playing ball. We then find out that Johnny doesn't understand women. I don't understand women. Don't worry, Johnny. None of us do. Heck, I only understand women when they're in the kitchen making me a sandwich. Oh! oh, calm down, calm down. It's just a joke. It's only satire. I don't mean it. Don't get your knickers in a twist. Oh! Johnny then asks his friend that's a psychologist for some advice. His friend gives him advice. Then Johnny says this. Peter, you always play psychologist with us. Fucking idiot. I need a quick break before this film gives me erectile dysfunction. You've already got erectile dysfunction. Shut it. As of right now, I despise this film with all of my being. The acting is at preschool level. The dialogue is atrocious. And a huge chunk of this movie makes no sense whatsoever. I'm honestly wasting time that I'll never get back in order to save you from doing the same thing. If you want to thank me for this, just send me some Yorkshire tea. Oh, I lovely, lovely. Here's a fun fact that's straight up crazy. Fans of The Room actually made a game. A game, which is, it makes no sense, just like the movie does. And you can play the game in a link below. The script writing is so lazy that this is how Wiseau insults people in this film. <laughs> chicken, Peter, you just a little chicken. Chip, 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 chip! <laughs> This even went viral and people were making songs out of it, like this. This movie could be minutes long if it wasn't for the amount of filler. In fact, it probably has more filler than Harvey Weinstein's victims. That's the joke I was going to say, but to avoid being tasteless, we decided to go with this. This movie has more filler than Courtney Cox's face. Just kidding though, I'm only having a laugh. I love you, Courtney. <sighs> Johnny's adopted son Denny then tells Johnny that he wants to take Lisa to Slamtown. Johnny just laughs it off, because he's a fucking idiot. I actually hate Johnny. I hate him. Is this guy even for real? Who talks like that? Hello pal, how's it going mate? Yeah, it's good. Oh yeah, I just want to bang your missus. Oh yeah, no problem mate. You know I'll do anything for you, don't you? Who does that? Who does that? Wedding day is looming in, so we get an unnecessary scene of Johnny and his amazing fucking friends playing catch. More filler. Why, why? Did somebody say fill her? I got a tasty pudding, pop. Why? Get out, Cosby, before I break your cocking off. Hi, hi! After power slamming Mark's wife to be all over his bed, Johnny goes jogging with Mark. I despise. I despise Johnny. He's pathetic. Cruella DeVille then tells Mark and Johnny that she's pregnant. She's a lying devil woman. She isn't pregnant. She's simply a raging psychotic tramp riddled with STDs. Devil woman STDs to be exact. This is where the real drama begins though. So get your popcorn. While you get your popcorn, I'll go for a piss. Anyways, now we're back. Mark knows Johnny and Lisa are doing the dirty. Earlier on, he had his suspicions and hit a video recorder and recorded them in the act. This is where we get an Oscar-worthy performance from Wiseau. It's cool, it's over! 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 It
It's not over. Everybody betrayed me. I fed up with this world. Poor guy. Or idiot, depending on which side of the fence you're on. He's had everybody in his life betray him, even though he's been a stand-up guy. This is where Johnny goes cray-cray. He then puts in an Oscar-worthy performance and trashes his own room. Oh dear. No need for that. Oh, oh, he's not that down. Oh, the boxes have had it. Fireplace is getting it now. Smashing all glasses. When Oh, photo. Oh, no. TV. TV. Not the TV. Not the TV. Come on. Not the TV. Oh, straight through the window. Lovely. Lovely. He then rubs Lisa's dress on his tallywhacker and takes his own life. Looks to me like she gave him crabs. Good night, Johnny. See they. We then get a scene where Mark and Lisa cry over the death of Johnny. This is where Mark blames Lisa for being a cheating whore. But we all know it takes two to tango, pal. Then all of a sudden the room abruptly ends. No comeuppance for Lisa and Mark. That's it. Final thoughts. I went into the room not knowing what to expect, as it has a cult status of being a so bad it's good movie. Tommy Wiseau comes across as a sex pest that has the creative talent of a damn potato. But you can tell that he gave it his all. But giving it your all doesn't mean that it's going to be a good movie. But honestly, the camera work on The Amazing Bulk was better. The dialogue is the worst I've ever heard. I genuinely had feelings of anger while watching this cesspool of excrement. You could trim the fat from this and make short film. I'll do it right here. I would do anything for Oh, he loves this girl. Oh dear. Oh no. You can't do that to him. That's just not. That's nasty. Oh no, he's took his life. He's took his own life. Masterpiece. Absolute masterpiece. It's mostly filler and none of it makes sense. What else doesn't make sense is how the heck did this get made? But I do really admire how he's had the balls to go out and make a film. And it's become a cult movie and it's known throughout the world as being a so bad it's good film and I've got to respect that. I've got a lot of respect for Wiseau for doing that. And while reviewing this, I've found more love for this movie than I thought I actually had by doing a lot of facts and finding out how it was made. I've got so much respect for him for doing this film. I'll always look back on it as a really bad movie that makes me laugh. But is it the Citizen Kane of bad movies? No. To me, a bad movie is bad. You want to switch it off as soon as you've put the damn thing on because it's that terrible. This one doesn't. I'm mesmerised by the bad acting and how Waizu's just made the film. And just the guy himself, he just sucks you into the screen even though it's just terrible in this movie. I don't know what it is, which makes me question, is the guy human? Having the movie abruptly end made it feel like half a film. I felt like we should have had an aftermath of Johnny's death. Does the evil vile witch Lisa go on to another guy to repeat the process? We'll never know. Another weird thing about Wiseau is that he, he apparently funded the whole movie himself by selling leather jackets. How does one even do that? I don't even know what Wiseau is. I don't even think he's from this planet. But I found a love for Wiseau and after this, I'm even gonna go and buy Best Friends Volume 1 and 2 because the guy's so fascinating. I actually don't like this film, but I'm really fascinated by his work and how he does it. And I've got to admit, after this, I am now a fan of Wiseau. Anyway, speaking of people that are questionable and we question if they're from this planet or not, you bowl, you're up. This guy invites his critics to fight him in boxing matches if they don't like his movies. So we better start training as this is what's next. Five teens looking for fun at a rave. Well, that's not going to fucking end well, is it? On an island full of zombies. Awful zombies. Oh dear, zombies are awful, apparently. I just want your flesh. That's what zombies usually want, anyway. They are everywhere. They are fast. Bloody hell, they're everywhere. They fight to the end and beyond. Well, I'm sold on that shot. Look at it. It looks fucking amazing. Fucking hell, well, that part went that fast. They had no fucking idea what just fucking happened. Aren't like, you supposed to sell the damn film? Oh wait, I'm sold now. They get popular video games of all times. The House of the Dead. I don't think I even saw a house in that, but fuck me for expecting too much. Have any of you unfortunate souls witnessed the room? What did you think? If you haven't seen it, will you check it out out of curiosity? 
let us know in the comments below. I love chatting with all of you. I genuinely want to know what you think of this movie as it divides a lot of people. Anyways, I'm off to have a shower as I feel like a filthy fucker after watching this garbage. Join our cult for instant self-respect. Siddy. <laughs> chicken, Peter, you just a little chicken. Chip, 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 chip.